Hi, this is Jack Crooks from Money and Markets TV. For some reason, a lot of people seem to think that the economic rules every other country in the world operates under do not apply to China. They say the Chinese economy will continue to grow uninterrupted despite the headwinds it's facing. But I say that's nonsense. China has made the same mistakes as a lot of countries. It overinvested, overheated, and created bubbles in key markets. And that has led to overleverage and overspeculation. It's what the Austrian School of Economics calls malinvestment. But China just reported that second quarter GDP growth was right in line with estimates, 7.6%. And now, bulls are saying that China is playing by different rules and won't suffer the same consequences as other countries where malinvestment was a problem. But I think those GDP numbers are fishy, especially coming from a notoriously tight-lipped government and especially given the negative numbers reported by independent news sources. For example, land sales are dropping precipitously. Chinese shipbuilders are getting killed by a huge decline in orders. The margins for Chinese steelmakers are razor thin due to rampant overcapacity. China's stockpiles of coal, iron ore, and copper are huge and growing ever larger. And inflation is still too high. Put all these problems together and you get a major slowdown in foreign investment. In fact, the value of share trading in the Asian Pacific region fell 22% in the first half of this year, a bigger drop than US or even Europe had. The Chinese government could counter this slowdown by encouraging more real estate speculation, which would boost land sales in the short term. But longer term, this policy would only exacerbate the real estate bubble and make things even worse for the average Chinese citizen. Ultimately, there's one big reason that I think the Chinese growth model is in big trouble. Its economy is still geared heavily toward exports, and demand for exports are falling all around the world. China made a big bet that demand would rebound, but that's not happening. And the longer demand remains depressed, the more the problems in Chinese domestic economy are exposed. And now, China is stuck between a rock and a hard place. If the government tries to stimulate the economy by increasing the money supply, the money will just end up in the state sector. That would cause an increase in inflation and a decline in efficiency, requiring an even bigger rebound in export demand to make up the difference. So don't buy into the improved sentiment and the momentum in Chinese stocks. Eventually, China will succumb to the pressures caused by malinvestment. And that will drag down the currencies of Asian bloc countries and Australia over the longer term. I'm Jack Crooks from Money and Markets TV. Thanks for watching.